So one of my favorite movie makers is Miyazaki from the famous studio Ghibli movies. He created Spirited Away, My Neighbor Totoro and House Moving Castle. A few years ago a documentary came out that recorded his insanely dedicated working style, The Kingdom of Dreams and Madness. He rises at 6 a.m. each morning and exercises and then takes his coffee and arrives at Studio Ghibli by 9 a.m. sharp, working Saturdays and holidays too. He draws all of the film's initial storyboard by himself by hand, which is something almost none of the other big animators do. Several times after the completion of one of his films, Miyazaki would suggest that the studio be shut down and all his staff be fired. No one was ever sure if he was just kidding. He is known for his endless amount of determination and motivation to every day get up and work on some of the most beautiful films. But how does he do it and what is the source of his motivation? That is the topic that I want to dive into today and I want to teach you about neuroscience of motivation and everything to optimize your motivation for the certain goals that you want to achieve. So hi, I'm Charlotte Fraza, a second year PhD student in computational neuroscience. And today we will discuss the neuroscience of motivation or the will. And this is a follow-up video of a previous video that I made about the way or how to achieve your goals. So also check that one out if you haven't seen it. But today we will really dive deep into how to motivate yourself and what is the neuroscience behind motivation. And I will give you at the end of this video three tools that are steeped in neuroscience such that you may optimize for motivation in your daily life. So let's get straight into it. So in our brain, different parts of our brain regulate reward prediction. We have the orbital frontal cortex, the anterior cingulate and the basal lateral amygdala. And all of these have been shown to be correlated with reward prediction error. But as I've said in neuroscience nowadays, people believe that it's more a network type of connection between the different areas of our brain that usually account for higher level types of behavior. But what it comes down to in the end is a cost versus benefit type of analysis that your brain makes when it looks at a certain goal. And based on this cost versus benefits, it decides if it's motivated enough to do that. So let's dive into this cost versus benefit analysis. So we have our costs, which are usually effort, time, discomfort, pain, etc. And we have the benefits, which are potential prices, meeting our psychological and physical physiological needs and somewhere in between these two we decide our motivation to strive forward towards our goals and usually these costs and benefits depend on three types of things so we have our physiological state our environment and our past history so if we break it down into these three components we can kind of play around with these three components and optimize for these such that our cost benefit analysis is positive towards the benefits and we increase our motivation so one of the goals this semester for me is to get a little bit better at French I used to be quite good at French when I lived in France but I haven't really been for the past two years so I really want to increase my level and probably be able able to read a full book in French. So I will walk you through the three topics that I talked about to see how I optimize for them to really allow for my goal to get better in French to come real. And hopefully as I walk you through, you will also get some tips and some tools such that you can also optimize for the goals that you want to achieve. So for motivation, one of the main components is our physiological state. So that's how rested we are, in which part of our circadian rhythm we are, how much stress we had, have we eaten, all these type of factors combined to decide how we feel usually and what state our body is in. And you probably know that if you haven't rested properly, it's just really hard to focus on a certain type of task. So if you look at right now your physiological state, you close your eyes and you just kind of feel where you're at, decide if you think that your body is at a good place right now. And if your physiological state isn't really at the place that you want it, the thing that people in neuroscience or that's grounded in the neuroscience of motivation 
motivation and reinforcement learning is to start behavior change with modest goals and rewards, even the smallest steps towards them. New behaviors emerge slowly because they usually work against the power of prior reinforcement. So that's to say that if we want to introduce new healthy habits to increase the well-being of our physiological state, we kind of have to introduce them slowly and carefully. So for example, if you want to be a little bit better rested, it's good to go to bed, for example, 15 minutes earlier and not immediately decide that today I'm going to sleep at nine o'clock and I'm going to wake up at five because the probability of you doing that based on your prior reinforcement learning is just very low. And another thing I want to talk about is a little bit like deep rest, the concept of deep rest. So you've probably heard the concept of deep work, but I think something that we don't think about enough is deep rest. So we have these kind of shallow rest moments throughout our week, for example, a really good meal or taking having a talk with a friend. But I think it's also good to plan throughout your week one day where you really have really focus on deep rest. And that is, for example, really disconnecting from the internet, from your phone, taking a long walk out in nature or having a really deep, good conversation with a friend. And I think this is as opposed to the sporadic moments that we have of relaxation, which is like watching a YouTube video or having a drink, for example. And I think these are usually more coping strategies and not really these deep rest moments. So when you look at your week, try to, for example, in the weekend, pick one day where you really try to disconnect from everything. And the second topic that we can play with when we look at motivation is our environment. So when we think of our environment, it's usually the availability of the goal that decides if we pursue the goal. So for example, if you walk past a restaurant and you're a little bit hungry, the chances of you being motivated to go to that restaurant and order a delicious meal increase significantly. And that's why when you think of your goals and your motivation, it's good to optimize your environment such that it really allows you to achieve your goals quite easily. So for example, you can decide in your room to just have one place where you only do work. So every time you want to relax, you leave that place. And every time you want to work, you go towards that place. And that way, at a certain point, your brain kind of starts identifying that place with work. And at a certain point, you will also start to notice that as soon as you enter that place, you kind of go into to this work mode mindset. Another topic that you can play with when you think of your environment is actually time. So the timing of day or the time when you do something is part of our temporal environment, I would say. So our temporal environment can, for example, be that you every morning you do an hour of French in my case. And that way, when that hour arrives, you kind of signify to your brain, ah, it's French time. So right now I plan my hour of French in the weekend and the way I'm doing it is with this language school Linguda. It's an online language school who was kindly enough to also sponsor this video. So I used to be, as I said, quite good at French, but because I don't really have people to practice with, it's becoming really hard for me and that's why I really like Linguda. As you can see, they have these kind of chapters and you can see your progress, so I'm still not very far. But when I book a class right now, I'm learning about the différence culturelle and I'm learning a little bit all about immigration, which I think is a really interesting topic. And I personally really believe that the fastest way to learn a language is to speak with a native speaker and in the case of Linguda all their teachers are native speakers. So I hope you join this language learning challenge and perhaps pick an hour in the weekend to really optimize for your language learning. And if you're super motivated Linguda also has this amazing language sprint. So the Linguda language sprint is a two-month intensive challenge that requires students to register at least for 15 or 30 lessons a month. And if students take part in every lesson they can receive a 50% to 100% cashback. So that means that it would be totally free if you're extremely motivated. So if you are trying to learn a language, I think this is a really cool challenge to do and I highly recommend signing up. You can use the link down in the description below or just check Linguda out for yourself. So the last thing you can optimize for is your narrative or your history. And this is a little bit more difficult because it is usually our experiences of the goal or our responses to a stimuli. And we cannot really change those because 
these are usually just inherent to us, but we can play around a little bit with the goals that we pick. So it has been written that a behavior will hold greater subjective value to the degree that it relates to one's core values and sense of self. Identity linked goals are more likely to be successful than identity irrelevant or identity counter ones. And this really just boils down to really thinking about what are your core values and do the goals that you've picked actually match your core values. Because I sometimes see that people are really unmotivated to do certain work or certain type of behavior. And it usually boils down to that they don't really relate to that goal. So for example, for me, my core values are wisdom, creativity and health slash happiness. So usually when I pick my goals, I do try to think about do these goals actually align with the type of values that I want to pursue in my life. So it, if you are still not sure about your values, there is this list of values online. And if you have some time, I think it's cool to kind of go over it and pick three that really resonate with you and then try to see if you can fit your goals to your certain values. And if you notice that some of your goals don't really fit your core values, it is maybe a good moment to reflect if these goals fit you and fit the life that you want to lead. So these were my tips for increasing motivation. If you have any tips for me, I would love to hear them. So put them down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week. Bye.